Today in the shop we got a 2001 Chrysler Sebring with a 3.0. Check engine lights on. I'm getting ready to hook up the scanner, see what's going on. So let's dig a little deeper. Okay, I had the vehicle hooked up to the scanner. A little history on this vehicle. It has no drivability issues that the owner is aware of. However, it's due for inspection. Check engine lights on. This car was bought at auction about two years ago. I believe the first year the emissions was exempt, so he wasn't worried about the check engine light. So he's been running with this check engine light for quite some time now. So it's been on for as long as the owner is aware of. He bought it with the check engine light on. So here we go. Off to the left here we can see we have a P0155 O2 sensor heater circuit, bank 2 sensor 1, and some freeze frame data here. Which you can see the vehicle is pretty much idling, warming up when it threw that code. However, down below here, we have a P013502 sensor heater circuit, bank one, sensor one. Now, is this a coincidence? Do we have a, a problem in the circuit? I guess the next step I'm going to do, I want to try to troubleshoot most of this with a DVOM, a digital volt ohm meter, a basic troubleshooting that you guys could do at home. Once you pull the codes and you find that you have a P0155 or a P0135, I'll show you how to go about checking the circuit integrity along with the heater circuit and the O2 sensor itself to see which route you got to go. So without further ado, let's start troubleshooting. Okay, I got my DVOM set up to the voltage scale. We'll be checking the front O2 sensor one first. And as you can see, it still has the original O2s in it. So I got the harness side disconnected from the O2 sensor. When I receive a vehicle that has a heated oxygen sensor code, this is one of the first steps I do to make sure my circuit integrity is good down to the sensor. Okay, you can see it starts here at the battery, comes down, you got a relay, goes through the relay, it's got this red conductor, goes to the heater circuit of the oxygen sensor, and you have this brown with white tracer that goes to the engine control module. What I want to do, I just want to see if all this is good in the circuit, if the relay is working, I have correct battery, battery voltage. So whatever my battery voltage is, I should have it on this red conductor at the connector right at the oxygen sensor. So I'm going to start by unplugging the oxygen sensor on the harness side, the red wire, so not on the oxygen sensor side, but the harness side on the vehicle. I want that red conductor, so we'll locate the red conductor, and we'll see if we have power battery voltage on that red conductor. So let's get started, and we'll start there. So I got the harness side disconnected from the O2 sensor. So we're going to pull the harness up. And if you remember, we want to find that red conductor. As you can see right here. So here's a red conductor off to the right side. So we want to check this ter upper right terminal to see if we have power battery voltage. So let's check that. And that'll tell us if we're getting power to our heater circuit. Okay, I got the DVOM set up to DC. You're going to see a lot of fluctuation on this dial, DVOM, when it's not hooked up to power. That's because it measures down into the millivolts. So you want to locate a good ground. I'm going to go up for this stud, this bolt on the intake. And remember the upper right terminal on the harness side, which is the right conductor. As you can see, 11.22. Okay, now that we know we have power to the O2 sensor heater circuit, how do we check the heater element in the O2 sensor? Well, first thing I would do to check to see if the circuit is open, maybe this element burned out and it, it's an open circuit, let's do a resistance check to make sure it's not open or shorted to ground. So we want to locate the terminals on the O2 sensor side that the red conductor and the brown conductor hook up to. So we'll locate the two conductors that hook up to this red conductor one and this brown with white tracer conductor three. I believe it's the two black ones. It's usually the two similar colors are for the heater circuit 
So let's take a look. So now we got this harness is going to the O2 sensor. We want to locate the two terminals for the heated oxygen sensor. So if we take a look here at the harness side of the vehicle, the red and the brown, so if this takes some plugs in just like so, we know our two black conductors are our heater circuit for the oxygen sensor. So what I want to do is perform a resistance check on these two conductors and see if we have an open circuit or a short circuit and I believe it should be anywhere from 4 to 8 ohms. Okay, to make this easier for me, I got these nifty alligator clips that hook up to my test leads. I'm going to set the DVOM up to check resistance. Right here. As you can see, when it says OL, it's an open circuit at a limit, or how I refer to it as open loop, because your, your circuit has to be a continuous loop in order to work correctly. So when I teach it, I like to call it open loop. However, at a limit, open loop pretty much refers to the same thing. So what I want to do is can see a continuation in this loop. So it goes to the DBOM, it's here, so our loop is open. When I touch this, I want to see a resistance. As you can see, it pretty much goes to zero. We have a completed loop. So with these nifty alligator clips, I'm going to locate the two black conductors, like we mentioned before. One side up like so. And the other side. And as you can see, we are reading open loop. Therefore, that heater circuit is open, it's burned out, so we need to replace the oxygen sensor. I'll show you a known good. Okay, so here we are over at the bench with a known good. These alligator clips up to the heater circuit. It's auto ranging. And as you can see, 4.5. So now that heater element is continuing that loop. So instead of an out of limit reading, open loop circuit that we were reading before, that heating element, like you've seen in the wire diagram here, is continuing that loop. So now you have a continuous loop. Continuity. Continuous. 4.5 ohms. The reason you're reading this resistance is because the element, the heating element in the O2 sensor is pretty thin. It has a resistance to it of 4.5 ohms. Okay, we're going to perform the same test on this back O2 heater circuit. I have this all set up, so I'm going to just do the resistance check right away. As you can see, we have an open, at a limit, open circuit on this heating element as well. Okay, let's take a look at some data. They're oscillating pretty decent. This car has a couple other issues. It could use a good tune-up and whatnot to get it running top-notch. However, for the most part, everything's looking good. Clear them out while I'm here.